Chapter 3 Jenny was on her knees in the dirt, pulling out the last of the dried flowers that had died weeks ago, when she spotted Ryan O'Connell pulling into his driveway in a ranger's vehicle emblazoned with the logo of the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. From what she could see, he hadn't changed one bit. He was still the same tall, broad-shouldered, arrogant asshole she fondly remembered, and she was reeling over the fact that he lived right next door to her. Like, what kind of sick joke was this? He stepped out of his vehicle in his uniform, and the way he walked with his holstered gun, she couldn't pull a gaze from him. She peered at him from between the rusty Hyundai she was still trying to sell and her newer, used little Jeep, and she sat up straighter, Remembering that her tank top barely covered her practical bra, she knew the gleaming white showed at the sides, and she pulled at the blue spaghetti strap of her cotton tank to cover herself. What could she say? Going braless wasn't an option with her generous C-cups. See you're finally getting around to cleaning up that mess, he said, looking right at her from over the tops of his mirrored shades. He walked across her driveway and onto her grass as if she'd invited him over. Even the way he said it had her fighting her first instinct, which was to hit back at him with some cutting remark. Instead, she just fisted her hands as she rested them on her thighs and took in the pile of dead annuals in the dirt. She didn't have a clue what they once had been, considering she didn't have a green thumb on her. It's really a matter of opinion, really, she said. Not sure why you're offering yours to me. Ooh, she wanted to pat herself on the back. She sensed that his smile and soft chuckle were not from humor, and he lifted his gaze, taking in everything about her aunt's house. I knew the woman who lived here for years. She was a fantastic, generous, sweet lady who knew how to be a neighbor. You know, respectful, courteous. She really took pride in her place. It's gone downhill, likely a little too much for you to look after. Yep, she got the zinger. Apparently, he had a cruel streak, too considering he was commenting on her character. She had to fight the urge to roll her shoulders. This was the kind of judgy shit she hated, and it never got old with assholes who thought they knew her. Guess a privileged white boy like you would think that, she snapped. You see a woman and her daughter alone, and they're what, not capable because neither has a penis? She took in the shock on his face, as he pulled off his shades and tucked them into his shirt front. Uh, no, he said in a low voice, though he didn't have the decency to even look embarrassed at having been called out. In fact, he took a step closer, and she had to tilt her head to look up. This privileged white boy, as you so aptly put it, lived next door to a single old woman who had one of the nicest yards and gardens in the area. She made everything about it look easy. And I was raised by a single mom of six who worked harder than three white men put together and never asked for help. Just stating what I see. Nothing like having him point out that she was the one who just jammed her foot in her mouth. She could feel her face heat, and she had to pull in a breath and try to regain what she could of her dignity before she came out looking like a bigger idiot. She pressed her tongue against her top teeth as she stared up at Ryan whose eyes were bluer than she remembered. Perpetual tan, good looks. Ugh, she had to pull it together. Well, this has been fun, she said. Are you done pointing out my shortcomings, or maybe you have a few more digs you'd like to add? He didn't smile this time, but his gaze seemed intense, hard. So you bought this and moved in a few weeks ago. Just you and your daughter live here? You didn't say last night if there was a husband, boyfriend, significant other in the picture, or any other kids. She hadn't bought the house, but she wasn't about to...